I'm attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal End Compliance, a full service corporate securities and business transactions law firm. Today is the continuation in a series of law casts discussing what is a security. In the last law cast, I talked about the Howey test for determining when an investment contract is a security. The Howey test has been applied to find that many non-traditional investments are a security. So for instance, in a later case, the court found that the sale of shares in a housing cooperative that were bundled with the cost of an apartment to be used as a residence and where the co-op income is used for common operating expenses and upkeep of the building, there was not a securities transaction, even though it was the sale of shares in the co-op, where the investors were attracted solely by the prospect of acquiring a place to live and not by financial returns on their investment. However, courts have found that the sale of a condominium unit itself can be a security where the offer of the unit is accompanied with an opportunity to participate in a rental pool. The offer of the unit requires use of an exclusive rental agreement. The offer of a unit limits time of use by the owner or involves shared ownership, such as timeshare arrangements, or advertising the sale of a unit with an emphasis on economic benefits, such as rental income or tax benefits. Applying the Howey test, courts have interpreted a security to include such diverse items as citrus groves, warehouse receipts, chinchillas, minks, diamonds, bullion, pay phones, prepaid phone calls, uh, prepaid phone cards, real estate and equipment, and condominium units where they were offered or sold under circumstances involving the investment of money and expectation of a return through the efforts of others. The Howey test actually interprets an investment contract as that term is used in the federal securities laws and as later clarified by the Supreme Court in Landreth Timber Company versus Landreth, is not meant to be used to decide whether all securities are indeed a security. Accordingly, where the sale of a business is completed through the sale of stock or other equity interests, if the ultimate success of the investment is dependent on the efforts of the investor buyer, even though the stock or other equity is clearly a security in the statutory de definition, the Howey test does not apply. In particular, the Landreth Court held that where a business is sold via the sale of an equity in the business, it is a security and the registration and exemption provisions of Section 5, broker-dealer registration requirements under the Exchange Act, and anti-fraud provisions under both the Securities Act and Exchange Act apply, but not through the Howey test. Also, as I will talk about in future law casts, Later SEC guidance and no action letters, as well as various state statutes, have carved out an exemption from the broker-dealer registration requirements in this sale of business fact set. I'm securities attorney Laura Anthony, founding partner of Legal and Compliance and producer of LawCast. Should you have any questions about today's topic, please visit securitieslawblog.com and lawcast.com or contact me directly. Inquiries of a technical nature are always encouraged.